G'day and welcome back to Unimig. The liner in your MIG torch is just one component that makes up a smooth wire feeding experience. If there are any issues with it, you're going to have problems when you weld. That's why changing your liner as needed is essential. Letting your wire drag because your liner is kinked inside the torch is going to give you an erratic feed, which you don't want. Changing your liner is relatively easy. So, when you do need to change it, here's our step-by-step -step guide on how. The liner inside your torch guides the filler wire through your torch lead and it ensures that the wire makes it out of the torch tip. Like with most things welding, your liner needs to match the type and size of your filler material. If you're using mild or stainless steel, you can use a standard MIG liner. But if you're using aluminium, you will need a Teflon liner. Torch liners are also color coded, so you can tell by sight whether it's the one you'll need for the right filler wire size. Blue liners are sized for 0.6 to 0.8 mm wire. Red liners are sized for 0.9 to 1.2 mm wire. And yellow liners are sized for 1.2 to 1.6 mm wire. These colors apply to both steel and aluminium liners. The main difference is the neck spring on the Teflon liners. You may need to change the liner before you feed your wire through, as they only fit specific sizes. You'll also need to change your liner if it's clogged, damaged or kinked. So here's how. So number one, remove the nozzle, contact tip, gas diffuser and tip holder from the front end of the torch. Number two, remove the liner retaining nut from the end of the torch. Number three, carefully pull out and completely remove the existing liner. Make sure that the MIG torch is laid out completely straight when you do this. Number four, carefully feed in the new liner down the torch lead to the end of the torch neck. Number five, fit the liner retaining nut and screw it in halfway down. Don't tighten it yet. Number six, snip the excess liner off to just below flush with the torch neck. The liner should line up with the bottom of where the tip holder screws in. Number seven, replace the front end parts of the torch. If you can't screw the tip holder back into place, the liner is too long and needs to be trimmed. However, don't cut it too short, as leaving a gap between the liner and the tip holder inside the torch will cause issues. Number eight, fully screw down the liner retaining nut and nip it up tight. This compresses the liner inside the torch cable assembly, preventing it from moving around during use. When you're changing your liner, it's best to keep the torch entirely straight and go slowly, as you don't want to kink the liner itself. Here's a quick tip. Lay your new liner next to the old liner and use the old liner as a measurement guide, cutting the new one to the same length. That way, you can be sure that the liner will fit in the torch perfectly. There are separate liners for steel wires and aluminium wires. If you're going to use a standard MIG torch for an aluminium wire, you'll need a specific aluminium liner, in the correct size. Replacing a Teflon liner when working with aluminium is mostly the same as replacing a steel liner, except there are a few extra steps. Once the old liner has been pulled out, you will need to attach a neck spring to the top of the new liner before you can insert it. The neck spring keeps the liner rigid so it can be fed into the torch with no issues and keeps the wire from kinking. It also helps protect the liner from getting too hot and melting inside the torch. The neck spring will butt up against where the tip holder screws inside the neck of the torch. The excess liner will instead hang out the back of the torch. Depending on your machine, there are two things that you can do with the excess. Number one, if your machine has no removable guide tube inside the Euro connection, Simply cut the excess off and screw the retaining nut back on. Number two, if your machine has a guide tube that can be changed, swap it out for a specific aluminium guide tube, which is slightly larger. The retaining nut can be screwed back into place with the excess liner hanging out the back of it. Don't forget to move the collet and the O-ring so they are clamped into place by the retaining nut when it's screwed in. Reattach the torch to the machine to make sure that you can line up the liner correctly. Then feed the excess liner through the guide tube and into the machine, where it will butt up against the drive rollers and hang out past them. Cut the liner to a length where it isn't touching the drive roller, but it's slightly protruding out of the end of the guide tube still. Having the liner go all the way to the drive roller, if possible,
helps to stop potential bird nesting that might have occurred if the wire was free to bounce around in the open guide tube. Finally, replace the front end parts of the torch. Checking your liner each time that you do change out your wire spool means that you'll be able to catch any problems with it early. A damaged or dirty liner is only going to cause you wire fitting issues, so if it needs to be replaced, then get a new one.